Welcome everyone, I'm Truthman and this is The OC Show Live Q&A Season 2, Episode 20. And it's been 40 weeks that we are doing this live show. It's a bi-weekly show where we talk about all the latest hardware and PC DIY news. And of course, all the overclocking uh, scores and news that we have in the past two weeks. Uh, today for the show, we have a special guest, Elmore Yom, that's gonna be talking about the uh, Maximus 8 Extreme. Uh, that's the most badass motherboard from Asus so far. And uh, we also have Tullius from India to report of the first large, large scale overclocking gathering uh, they had in India. He's actually haven't got much sleep over the past few days, so um. it's, uh, it's good to have him on the show. And of course, we'll talk about all the competition happening at OC Esports and all the score that we can find there. Um, let's introduce the first guest for tonight, John, uh, Jan actually, um, he's an active overclocker for decades, uh, we know him for a long time, he was one of the grand finalists of the worldwide competition like the uh, Master Overclocking Arena and he's an active member of HWBot since 2006, so that's pretty much from the start and Helmore, you have been giving a lot to this community since your involvement uh, more than a decade ago and it all started in Sweden and it's now continuing that in uh, Taiwan by now as you're working at Asus in the research and development department. It's a pleasure to have you on the show tonight. So guys, please welcome Elmore. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Hi, Hi Elmore. It's, uh, it's a thorough <laughs> introduction. <clears throat> Pretty detailed. Yeah, actually. you're not used to this kind of introduction, huh? <laughs> yeah, not much, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's perfect you managed to wake up because we all know that uh, it's quite difficult for you in the morning so I do appreciate that you are here with us uh, our second guest is Tullius you already saw him for the first time at the HWBot World Tour Asia in June earlier this year and you also saw him in the uh, OC show episode 16 so that was like four show ago and it just helped organize one of the overclocking events in India that was the power user Asus power user meet but we're gonna go back into that much more in detail. So please welcome to Luz from India. Hey. <laughs> How's it going, man? Not much sleep? Not much sleep at all. Well, actually none. <laughs> but it's good to have you here. And as always, to uh, manage the show, we have Timothée Xiala from uh, hey Overclocking TV. He's live from our studio in Taipei, Taiwan, along with Jan. Uh, hi, Timothée, how are things are doing? Very good, very good. Already. Perfect. So you're gonna do all the click click tonight. Okay. You're gonna go and yeah. If you see me panic as usual, track. that's because something is wrong. And yeah. <laughs> so on the live track, there's already a comment from someone asking, "Who is the lumberjack?" <laughs> Hilarious. But that's, uh -oh. that's the only one not living in Canada right now. So, that's <laughs> so guys, if you have any comments, just feel free to throw it in there. Especially if it's funny, we like that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, as, as we say, if you have any questions, just can uh, shoot them on the live chat. Question about the topics we're going to have tonight or uh, if you want to have fun and uh, make fun of, uh, of the topics we're discussing today. Uh, that's going to be a pleasure to have you on the stream. Uh, don't forget, guys, we're streaming this live on Twitch, but we are also streaming this live on YouTube Gaming. Uh, that's going to be uh, better for the guys that have issue with the, uh, the, um, the bandwidth. So the YouTube um, Gaming is actually much more... Uh, permissive on the bandwidth so if you have a low quality connections or you have so much lag on twitch you can just switch to youtube gaming and you look for youtube.com forward slash overclocking tv and you will find it um, i would like to start this show it's the 20th show that we have uh, as i said we're doing it for like more than 40 weeks now it's been over like it's quite a long time like doing the show twice um, twice a month pretty much like every two weeks and I wanted to we wanted to have something new for this show and basically it's like what did we like in the past two weeks uh, either if it's related to overclocking or not as long as it's technology related uh, to use let's start with you um, what was your uh, most like or dislike news that you had in the past two weeks um <clears throat> Well, actually, what I've been most kicked about is is the new Samsung 950 Pro, the NVMe SSD that um, they've, they've they've got coming. Um, you know, for me, this is this is killer because you can slam one of these on like a on your Rampage fives or your Z170s or whatever, and the performance is staggering. It's even faster than your 750 Intel drives. Um, I'm dying to get one and you know, to test them out. And the pricing is pretty epic too. 
you know, Samsung's got its 3D9, they've got that massive production behind it. So pricing's incredible, actually. So it says on the website, it's like uh, 2,500 megabytes per second per, per read, second. right? Yes. Yeah. Really fast, yeah. A this lot faster really than most faster. SSDs you find anyway. That's the whole Yeah, point. at least four, yeah, between four and five times faster, so. They're, they're really, essentially yeah. the, the only vendor with the uh, 3D stacked um, NAND flash, right? Right, right. Hmm. That, Pretty cool. Is that the first thing we see with the, um, with the 3D stack um, NAND on it? Uh, or well, no. that's, that's the only product on the market right now? No, <laughs> no, no. They've, they've got 3D NAND in the 840, I mean, in the 850 EVO and the 850 Pro and all of those as well. So, yeah, this isn't new, but it's just they've got you know they they've actually shrunk it i don't know if they're using the latest die shrink on this drive i don't know but yeah i mean they're turning out 3d9 like it's going out of style anyway so yeah so for you that is the highlight for the uh, for the past two weeks and you do that expect and, I guess, a lot um, of... having hazan here he's actually asleep but yeah having <laughs> hazan in bombay has been pretty epic as well <laughs> yeah. so, so that's your two highlight for the past two weeks yeah. <laughs> <laughs> excellent. <laughs> well, good one. Excellent. Um, Helmore, what uh, what was what would be the best news for you in the past two weeks? <clears throat> um, I have this um, well, not Kickstarter, but this uh, I think in Indiegogo <laughs> project, <clears throat> which is called the Scarp uh, Laser Racer, uh, mm -hmm. which I thought was pretty cool. <laughs> So what is that? Is it well, laser razor really? Was it laser <laughs> stuff? Well, essentially, you don't you don't need to uh, switch out dull blades anymore. <clears throat> oh. You just need to change batteries. <laughs> 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 they even well, have uh, a video actually. <laughs> yeah, the, the the video from the guys and uh, I, I made the comment earlier. It's like if you look at the video, there's only this guy shaving. All the other guys are not shaved or properly shaved at all. And they're working on a, on a special uh, laser razor, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so yeah, they definitely need one. Yeah, just and, just uh, for uh, trimming, right? <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, just for trimming. Uh, Elmo, can you just uh, detail a little bit more what is uh, what was this project about? Um. Well, it's it's a Kickstarter project, right? But these guys have uh, been doing research for a couple of years. They uh, managed to fine tune the laser so uh, they could like accurately cut off the um, the hair, right? Mm -hmm. So I think they they said in the video like um, <clears throat> to have like the way you cut things with a laser is that you have the uh, the energy from the lasers absorbed into the whatever you want to to like essentially burn off right uh, so it was essentially it was quite easy with um, uh, like black hair but uh, different uh, colors of hair especially like uh, really light white hair was hard for them to mm. to uh, absorb it with the laser right but they managed to work this out and um, yeah essentially have they must have had <coughs> something that um, they feel they can commercialize on, right? <laughs> <coughs> they must have had some great smell in the lab testing out that. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, that, that's going to be interesting to, to find out. Uh, so may, maybe wait for the first reviews, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's, yeah, um, sure. Yeah. I thought yeah. it was I thought it was pretty cool. Anyhow, so. <coughs> did, you, did you actually bag them on uh, Indiegogo? Uh, I actually found it... Um, after the uh, the first couple of backers, like they have, uh, so with this um, uh, crowdfunding, right? Like the earlier yeah. you get in, like the lower the price, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Uh, all the all the lower tier uh, backings are already yeah um, sold, sold out. I think yeah. it's like it's ar like almost two hundred or something like that. Yeah, one yeah. one one eighty nine uh, yeah. right now. Uh, and uh, it's for what, March 2016. It's the ETA. Yeah. So, so you're gonna get one? Um, I th I think I, I will wait to, uh, to get see the how uh, <laughs> you know how, how how bad the smell from the burnt hair is. And because you know. yeah, actually that <laughs> must be the big thing, right? The smell must be uh, terrible. I, I don't mean, know if it actually I'll, smells. I'll actually, from that that initial video, the the cutting um, performance of the racer doesn't seem to be that great. 
Um, Hopefully they can they can improve this uh, for a retail product, yeah. right? But um, yeah, and and I, I do guess that all of us on the show tonight quite need a shave, a shave, <laughs> need a razor to. I shave don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for for your uh, for your like of the of the week, uh, Timote. What would be yours? Uh, so you know, I'm always into uh, small DIY projects and stuff. So. Actually, uh, I'm getting into Arduino recently, so that those are small dev board, a little bit like uh, Raspberry Pi and stuff. And I, fe I actually, um, I bought one of those. So it's the Arduino Yun, and this one is pretty cool. Uh, I found because it, uh, it has all the advantage of all the other Arduinos if you're into that. Uh, so it has a pretty much the same MCU uh, than the Arduino Leonardo or things, uh, all those bigger uh, Arduino boards. And it also comes with uh, a CPU in there. So it has both uh, a regular sensor reader kind of thing. And it also has um, a whole, like a, not a whole Linux, but like a lightweight Linux distro running on there with Ethernet port, USB, um, and even a Wi-Fi. So it can, you can pretty much plug that to a battery pack and have a PC running on there for, uh, for doing all of the sorts of stuff you want to do, like weather stations. Um, yeah, and it, pretty much anything. So it's actually pretty cool, and I'm experimenting with it for doing like some kind of live sensor reading stuff. So work in progress. Hopefully, some good, cool <laughs> stuff coming out out of that. I haven't tried overclocking it. I suppose you can, but uh, there's no <coughs> real good way to cool this down. Uh, well, you could probably put like some thermal thing on there here, and you know. But yeah, it's not this really designed for anything like that. But it's pretty cool. <laughs> Well, on, on a side note, I saw this uh, Arduino from with the um, microcontroller from Intel now as well. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, oh, about mm -hmm. to be retail, so that's cool. And um, actually, Intel released the Arduino 101 uh, with the Q. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. That I'm talking about. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So this one gonna have a lot of sensor by like directly um, bundle on the on the chip. The, uh, but then you need well, it has all the accelerometers, gyroscope, gyroscope, maybe GPS, actually stuff like that. So you pretty much have a, a phone, right? You have the the whole. Uh, mm. SOC yeah, it's, it's using their um, uh, Quark mm. SOC, which is a yeah, the micro yeah. microcontroller. Yeah, yeah. Um, that 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 one that the uh, Yun here has nothing on board uh, besides the chips. <laughs> so you pretty much have to plug everything yourself. But if you get those Why shields, you can actually pretty much online find all the. All the sensors uh, can easily be bought. And but it seems this, this one it. has uh, yes, like networking on board, right? Yeah. Like it has Ethernet and Wi-Fi. That's why I was interested <laughs> in here, because yeah. you don't need to add the extra shields. And actually, if you buy the the Uno, which is pretty much actually exactly the same size, if you buy Ethernet or Wi-Fi shield, it's the same price than that one without one or the, one or the other. So, so here you, you have just both buy it at the same price. Everything is bundled in one. Yeah, it's like eighty. It's eighty dollars. This one. Uh, even here in Taiwan, it's like sixty-five because it's manufactured here. It's cheap. So yeah, <laughs> cheaper cool. than the cheapest. Well, you mean the, the, the cheap <laughs> cheap knockoffs, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, the cheap knockoffs as well. Well, that's the beauty of Arduino, right? It's open, so everyone can make a, a copy of the real thing <coughs> legally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, thank you, Timore. Uh, on my side, that would be Dell buying EMC. And for uh -huh. you guys that doesn't know who EMC is, actually, I guess that everyone knows Dell, right? The, the manufacturer for PC component and server. And EMC, if you doesn't know, um, is the company that is um, having uh, VMware. They're having EMC. So that's a storage network, storage area network, NAS and mm. SAN. Uh, they also have RSA, uh, Secure ID. So that's uh, one of the most used uh, um, dual, dual factor authentication uh, system. And Dell is going to be buying uh, EMC for $67 billion. Oh. Um, <laughs> To, to put that in, in perspective, that's Do they the even have that kind of money? <laughs> I, I don't know, but that's, that's know. one of the yeah. biggest acquisitions ever in IT. If you if you leave away all the ISP uh, merging and so on. Mm. But like for for ha X hardware company that is Dell, buying an X hardware company that is EMC, uh, it, it's, it's extremely uh, surprising first, especially for the price. And on the second hand, it's like, um, Dell have been has been buying a lot of uh, company uh, in the past few years. They buy uh, yeah. Quest software for the monitoring and the uh, surveillance. They bought uh, Wise, that is the thin clients, so, or uh, do all the virtualization application uh, on the server and just display them on the other side. And one 
big stuff they were missing was like the storage network. They had some, but that was not very efficient. So if they buy EMC, that's going to be like their complete new storage system, I guess. <laughs> Okay, so we were talking about, um, we're going to the uh, OC eSport update, the competition update. So, Timothy, what, what was the, uh, what were the uh, competition you wanted to talk about? Oh, um, so yeah, so talking about the competitions actually on OC eSports, uh, not so much actually happened uh, in the last weeks because uh, there was a little bit downtime after uh, the um, old school is best old schools, um, you had the team cup that was finished, etc, etc. So, the only competitions that were going on were the Rookie Rumble and the Novice Nimble. So no, Rookie Number 23, um, right now uh, there's like a 261 participants. We have uh, Sager R in the lead, uh, Big T Dad G in the second position, and NTN MD, uh, underscore MD in third position. So those guys have been there uh, since quite a few days now. On the Rookie Rumble AMD edition, uh, so that's the number 20, and we have 21 participants, which is actually quite a ride for AMD. Uh, KOS under score S uh, uh, with 136 points, NCN MD again here, um, second position, and AMD RTP Jack Low Peters 101 points. Um, now, other competition that was going, the Novice Nimble number five, and here we have 43 teams competing, so pretty popular competition. Overclock.net is in the lead, uh, TechLab will see second, and uh, Overclock.pl team third. Uh, I have to mention that uh, I saw the Coquitlan guys made a news about being first in the Novice Nimble number four. Uh, so right now Coquitlan is seven, so guys keep pushing it. Uh, don't let yourself impress by the other teams. Um, France needs to win. Uh, that being so said, uh, you, you have to mention that is a complete, uh, full, massive strike by Overclock.net. They got 50 points at all the stages. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. That's it exactly. So, well, you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, like 50 points at every stage. That's the maximum you can get. But you know, I think the the Brazilian guys are not going to let that happen. Hopefully, so we can have some nice challenge. Um, so besides that, all the other competitions are finished. But as you see, the, as the image is loading, the HyperX OC Takeover Qualifiers is coming up on OC Esports. So that's the, um, I think it's the competition with the biggest cash prize of uh, 2015 with 15K um, US dollar in price. So of course, divided across the, the top rankings. Um, so in this competition, uh, we will have a different set of benchmarks uh, up for qualifiers. So I let you go through the stages at home. Um, this qualifier, it's open to everyone globally. Um, you have a stage, of course, on max memory uh, clock, as well as another one on XCU 5 gigahertz. Of course, this competition is about memory. So the focus here is going to be memory to, to qualify. You need to have IPREX or Kingston memory kit. And uh, there will be two person for each region to qualify. So two person for EMEA region, including uh, Africa. There's the APAC region, two people, two people for North America, two people for South America, etc. So it's going to be quite a cool competition. Finals are set uh, somewhere in December. And um, so that's going to happen and take place at the Californian office, headquarter office of HyperX. So really, really actually looking forward to that one. That, that's going to be pretty packed in uh, in the first two weeks of December because there's going to be a lot of overclocking even happening at pretty much the same time. So that's going to be interesting to see uh, what are the news. And I guess we're going to have a lot to talk about in the in the next few OC show uh, regarding all that. Yes, yep, yep, yep. It's going to be quite interesting to go through the scores when they come in. And uh, yeah, this year actually we have to mention uh, Extramatic is not going to be in the qualifiers. So <laughs> since he has a golden ticket from last year, so that's going to be pretty cool. Oh yeah, and there's also the, um, there's also one golden ticket for one person out of the top twenty. So that also is something new this year in the HOT, and this is going to be very very cool. Okay, so the topic for t uh, one of the main topic we had for tonight was the Asus Maximus 8 Extreme motherboard. Uh, we didn't saw it uh, quite much on the internet yet uh, because it has been released just a uh, few weeks ago. Uh, it's based on the Intel Z170 chipset, and uh, as you know, it's on the market since uh, early August. And almost all the manufacturers now have their complete lineup on the market. Uh, but tonight we want to focus on the Asus Maximus 8 Extreme motherboard. And for the people that are watching us live on Twitch or on YouTube, feel free to ask. 
uh, any of your questions on the live chat. We're going to be monitoring all that. Um, first of all, we would like to introduce a little bit more Elmore Young. Uh, Elmore, you're a successful overclocker, as we say, and you're now working on the other side of the fence, uh, directly at the manufacturers. So what is exactly your work at ASUS? <clears throat> I'm an um, engineer at uh, Republic of Gamers R&D uh, here in Taiwan. And uh, basically, you just do research and development and on the new features you want to see on the board? Um, <clears throat> well, I work together with uh, two other overclockers in uh, kind of a um, sideline operation, uh, trying to uh, improve the products for <clears throat> for any overclocking um, functions and uh, just uh, the overall overclocking experience of the motherboards. Well, I guess that's going to be more about like the, the complete lineup, just, just not just the extreme board, but most of the uh, ROG products. Um, yeah, um, all of the, the ROG uh, motherboards, essentially, which is uh, Great. our main that's main focus. Well, that that's good. Uh, let's jump to the board uh, before uh, before we jump to the, the the tricky question for you, Elmo, because you have like you are one of the best for the inside stories on how this board is developed. Um, let's go to have like a quick overview of the board by itself. Uh, basically, uh, it's based on the D170 chipset, as I said. It's uh, LGA1151. It's supporting the 6th gen Intel processors, uh, the latest uh, Skylake CPUs, as we call them. Um, it comes with the OC Panel 2, 4 PCI Express slots uh, to support multi-GPU. Multi uh, you have the latest connection you could expect from a 500 USD motherboard. Uh, you have USB 3.1, Thunderbolt 3, NVMe SSD support, like uh, we talked with Tullius earlier in this show. Uh, you also have the U2 connection, SATA Express, and the Supreme FX sound card that is in pretty much all of the uh, uh, of the main board. Uh, do you guys have one of the board here in the studio in Taipei? Yeah, we do have the board actually. <laughs> actually, yeah, Elmore can show so, it to you. <laughs> this one. Yeah. Oh, Elmore, you you look <laughs> you look like a like a correct booth babe at, at holding that motherboard. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm so not sure if that's a compliment or not. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's go a little bit more in deep about the engineering process. Uh, can you explain us uh, what is the, the 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 main important process in doing this kind of motherboard before it goes to the market? <clears throat> um, yeah, essentially, it's um, it's quite a quite a long journey, so to say. Um, <clears throat> we uh, would start out first with um, whatever is available, so. Uh, the first thing we would get is uh, a reference board. Uh, the very first you thing. Mean the reference, um, uh, from um, yeah, essentially, or uh, um, we would get uh, reference schematics and make our own version of it. <clears throat> um, and um, with this first first board, of course, it's uh, it's very limited. Essentially, very very basic functionality. Starting up, not not much. Not much else, right? Um, so at this point, um, we just start start trying everything, right? So whatever whatever helps with uh, with overclocking, you know, for extreme purposes, like uh, is there a cold bug? How can we try to fix the cold bug? Um, like just essentially trying whatever we can come up with. Um, you have your hands free in trying everything you can for the for making the board better than that that the best you could do. <clears throat> uh, sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah, uh, you have your hands free on everything you want to try on the on the few first revision of the board. Yeah, sure, sure. That's uh, uh, one uh, of the things that um, <clears throat> actually that uh, improves. Uh, uh, the boards a lot, I think, is that we we, we have quite free hands uh, uh, working with this stuff. We kind of, uh, as I said before, we're <coughs> working side by side with uh, the other development. Uh, so we we just uh, just a part of the team essentially. Well, that, that that's good to uh, to have this kind of uh, of explanation. Uh, you thought that's well, it's like quite a long journey. Um, yeah. What is so <coughs> from to get this product. Um, then we would, uh, of course, uh, make our first uh, uh, 
uh, fully uh, on board, kind of the basis for um, the whole whole platform. So even um, the other um, divisions, not only ROG, but uh, like the the standard, uh, like for this generation, for example, we have the what the C170A. Uh, they have the Pro Gaming line. They have the the Deluxe and and also the ROG then. Right? Uh, Sabertooth and, and all of all of these skews, right? <clears throat> so they, they essentially they come from they have the same DNA. Um, so um, uh, the next step for that is to implement our uh, ROG uh, way of doing the board, uh, all the extra features that come with it, and um, <coughs> all of that. So there's there's several board revisions. I mean they have they have to decide which. Uh, um, products they're gonna launch at a certain point, like which SKUs they're gonna have, and, and all of that. So it all like splits up um, into different uh, different tracks, right? But it all comes from the same same board, the motherboard. <laughs> so it's like you have the you, you basically have like the mother of all the motherboard, and then you <laughs> the mother of the motherboard. Right, it's a it's a process of evolution, right? <clears throat> um, so uh, all the all the overclocking stuff we, we're working on, most of it uh, would make it into uh, the full lineup. Like for example, um, uh, whatever whatever settings we can find for improving memory overclocking and uh, you know all of this, like this this you will you will find that in in all of the ports the, from the the work that we do. Right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> The, the the what's the the, the time frame you, you you talk about the process by itself but it's like like a six months work or a year and a half work <clears throat> um it depends uh, on uh, on intel pretty much right uh as soon as we you we get the motherboard <laughs> <clears throat> yeah as soon as, uh, as we have cpus uh, and uh, working reference platform then uh, we can we can start doing our work right uh, so I guess uh, for for sky like it's uh, it was quite a, quite quite early actually we have had access to all that it's uh, pretty much about a year ago I'd say so uh, not a full year but maybe yeah maybe 10 months something. well still that's that's uh, that gives you the time to do like a complete um, it is and make uh, it there there is a, a lot of uh, uh, behind the scenes changes for this platform. It, there's like a, a, it's a very uh, refined platform. So it, they've been working for this for a very long time. Uh, you can you can like from the engineering part you can tell, uh, especially all the all the I/O capabilities and all that. It's very uh, quite quite, well, quite good actually. Uh as always, as you're working the research, uh, research and development at ASUS, uh, you have access to a lot more information that we could have uh, access on the public side, pretty much, or like the the, the small few that have connection to the to, to some of the the companies. Um, but it's good to know that you, you cannot just pull in a, a new uh, skew like this and with all the features in just just a few months. You need like you need decent amount of time to make sure you can go to the revision and so on. Um, there was uh, some talk and discussion with the uh, as well he on uh, X99. Uh, there was discussion about the uh, special uh, like OC socket that especially Asus was uh, Asus was promoting at the at the time. Is there a similar thing existing for LGA 1151? <laughs> and if so, does the uh, Maximus 8 Extreme have it? Um, th there is, yeah. There there are some um, some extra pins on the CPUs. Uh, it's it's quite a. Uh, easy to see if you if you look at the back of it, <clears throat> um, but the, unfortunately for this generation, uh, we didn't find that they had any significant function compared to well, Haswell E, for example. <clears throat> and uh, um, when you, when you do that, you do test by yourself, yeah, because that's I guess that's undocumented uh, usage by Intel. Um. It, yeah, this is this would not be in the reference uh, documents and, and stuff like that. <clears throat> um, 
I, I see. Uh, talking about some of the uh, overclocking features we have on the board, uh, it seems the same as the previous generation. You have the OC panel, you have the OC zone, you have the DG plus PWM. Uh, what is uh, special about the Maximus 8 Extreme? Is there something uh, very interesting for, for people to jump on it? <clears throat> um, it is uh, mostly um, um, just a, a <coughs> An increase in the spec more than something uh, uh, revolutionary. Like it, it's more of a uh, refinement, I would say. Um, <clears throat> the the thing is, um, the the Sky platform. It's um, uh, most of the I/O capabilities are there. Like you can add um, like USB 3.1, and uh, you know you have Alpine Ridge and, and all of that. Um, <clears throat> so um, we, we, we've done essentially the, the best we can, uh, essentially try to make the, the best possible of the, of the situation. <clears throat> um, well, that, that is, that's the thing, you, you try to just improve uh, what you already have. Um, if there are features, especially on this board, that uh, give you a lot of challenge or uh, on the series? <clears throat> um, as, as I said, like uh, with the CPU pins, uh, we tried a lot of stuff. Um, unfortunately, there's not much uh, that's helping with this. Um, so it's mostly been, I don't know, fine tuning voltages and um, trying to get the, the high, like for example, DDR4 memory overclocking is very good on this platform. <clears throat> so just uh, just trying to optimize that and uh, yeah, just just making everything as good as it can be. Uh, talking about making stuff as good as you can be, uh, do you have a limitation like on the format? You have to respect the ATX format. Uh, I guess you have some uh, rules to respect and framework to respect to to make a motherboard. <laughs> um, we have uh, well product specifications, right? So we have we have to adhere to these. Um, uh, this, this, like everything we do, has to fit within uh, uh, budget and uh, the format and all that. Like you have, um, like micro ATX, right? Like you, you cannot do four-way on micro ATX board, for example. Um, <clears throat> we uh, didn't make a four, like uh, four-way capabilities for this generation, uh, or like in Nvidia four-way at least, um, mm -hmm. because it's. Four ways. It's um, we we did the uh, considerations, and you just have to go X nine nine. It doesn't make sense, you know, to run uh, four on, 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 on Skylake. Yeah. So so basically, you're saying that uh, if you want to go four way, just don't use Skylake. Just go, just go use as well E. <coughs> uh, that's gonna be what uh, the platform gonna be much more uh, competent to, to to support. Yes. Um, you have you have a limited amount of PCIe going to the CPU, so. There's only so much you can you can go do with it. <laughs> you can enable the support, but that doesn't mean that it's actually useful. You, know? <laughs> you can have extra chip on the board, you can have extra stuff, but uh, it's that's not going to be the main focus, and that's going to increase the price as well. Like the motherboard is already 500 USD at the at the retail price, so that's actually quite a quite a premium already for for that. Um, the, talking about the uh, like the launch and Skylake and everything, um, for the Skylake launch, Asus released the, the video of the ROG Absolute Zero event, uh, where we saw a dozen of top overclockers that were crushing top scores with the uh, Asus ROG motherboard. Uh, what was the purpose of the events? <clears throat> um, yeah, we, we invited a couple of guys to come come over here to, to play with the platform um, about a month before the actual launch. Um, the, uh, just to max out the platform, um, get all the uh, whatever uh, high scores uh, we can do. Um, also, that it's uh, we try to get that last last minute feedback for um, like the extreme overclocking as well. <clears throat> so, um, for example, this year. Um, <clears throat> The thing we noticed during the, the event was that uh, the sockets were taking a lot of um, uh, 
well, a lot of beatings <laughs> uh, during running, running because it's a platform that's uh, essentially cold bike free. Um, so there's very, very fast uh, temperature transients uh, going down to uh, minus one, 96 degrees. Uh, and this, this puts a lot of strain on that plastic in the socket and this, uh, the pins and all that. <coughs> Um, so for, for that event actually we had the uh, you call the OC socket but uh, the manufacturer we're using were not really uh, we we had a high failure rate for that so for the the, um, the official board uh, we changed it back to a non OC socket because it, it, the features were not really improving the, the performance for us so we went with um, <coughs> better, better uh, performing socket instead. Okay, so you, you did prefer to have like a, a more stable solution than uh, a possibility of having more failures uh, that you will not uh, be able to guarantee for that. Um, talking about like the, the the previous testing and so on, how do you guys do the testing for for the BIOSes? Uh, who decide and how do you decide uh, what OC failures get into the BIOS or get removed? <coughs> Honestly, that's uh, that's mostly a matter of resources. Um, uh, whatever whatever we feel is important we can uh, we can push it through uh, but we have to consider that they have of, often the the bios is uh, the last thing to get ready so uh, we have to make certain considerations for the bios uh, we cannot play around too much with uh, with that unfortunately <laughs> yeah i see it's a, a, um, lot, a lot of uh, bugs and stuff that has priority <clears throat> Of course, like the, the I guess that the support for the uh, for the all this queue and so on are priority on any new features that you want to add into the BIOS. That that makes sense. That's the that's the the, the core business of of ASUS. Like the feeder are just the extras for it. Um, my last question for you guys for you tonight will be like uh, we all imagine that the research and development department it looked like a Formula One labs where you have like all <laughs> the new stuff, all the crazy uh, all the crazy lasers and so on. Uh, but uh, can you describe us how it looked like for you and what is your daily routine? <clears throat> um, well, we, we uh, pretty much um, uh, integrate with the rest of the R&D. So it's all, uh, all cubicles and, and that. <clears throat> um, we do have a, a specific uh, overclocking area uh, inside the, the R&D with the uh, LN2 tanks, <laughs> pulling off steam once in a while and all that. <clears throat> Um, Been there. There's uh, <laughs> plenty of thermal paste everywhere, and yeah. <laughs> that, <clears throat> can I can I say it's a messy lab or? <laughs> um, I'm I'm sure you've seen uh, uh, the all the Shamino style rigs from uh, within HQ. Um, that's uh, <laughs> essentially how it looks like. Um, previous generation uh, uh, modified graphics cards and and. Uh, <clears throat> He's the master of the zombies, so... <laughs> yeah, it's... Um, but that was it. it it's interesting, uh, as a visitor, for sure. I would actually love to go visit that, but I know it's uh, it's very difficult for... Like, because you have a lot of unreleased stuff and NDA stuff that uh, we can get in on. <clears throat> one one thing that's, that's both uh, good and bad is that we're right in the R&D, so... <clears throat> it's a restricted area for, uh, for outsiders. Um, so I, I, I guess that even for some... Uh, Asus employees, it's restricted area anyway, so... <clears throat> um, yeah, might be. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thank you, Jon. Thank you, Jon, for uh, answering all the questions about the uh, the Maximus 8 Extreme and, uh, and the few uh, things happening at AS at the moment. Um, we're going to switch to the last topic for tonight, uh, talking with Tullius about the, a large-scale overclocking event in India. Uh, so, Tullius, can you just present us what was the, uh, the event about? So basically, we've been doing this every single year here. Um, we do this big event where uh, we get all the power users and all the enthusiasts from across India and we gather them in Bombay and we do um, like a demo, a kind of event where we show them how to overclock and what performance is about and you know what the benefits of ROG and the high-end gear is and stuff like that. So. Uh, it's it's basically that and this year the guys at Asus totally wanted to you know kind of overhaul it so 
Uh, um, how, many, how many people did you add pretty much for this one? Um, for this one, we had about 45 people. And they and they all tried to overclock? They all, yeah, well, well about, about, about 20 of them seriously, seriously tried to overclock. And most of them were, you know, just the, uh, the other half were, um, you know, at least very, very interested. And they were asking the right questions about the gear and what it takes to overclock. So very, very interested in overclocking. And now they've kind of got, you know, a taste of what it can get them because We have them push uh, 6600Ks up to 4.5 gigahertz in cache and memory at 3.2 and 3.2 gigahertz and stuff like that. So they were really surprised at how easy it was actually, you know, with the right guidance that, you know, you can actually get this performance. It's just, it's there. It's easy and it's for the taking. So yeah, that got them really interested. Then all of them actually signed up with the, with uh, HWBot today itself. At least the guys who weren't already signed up, so they've all kind of submitted results. So it's good to see activity from India finally. And um, <laughs> you have been yeah, working gonna... a lot on on trying to push that. I remember at the uh, HW about World Tour, you were very like uh, going to that and say, "I, I want to do more and 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 so on." Um, can, can you describe like the, the the experience and the feelings that you have at this event with the other uh, the other overclockers? Um, it's just. It's just joy because you get to share and you get to meet people who, you know, are on the same wavelength. So it's just pure, pure happiness. Um, these guys are so inquisitive, you know, it's, it's, it's actually pleasing to see that kind of enthusiasm from, you know, these youngsters. We had guys as, as young as 15 years old clocking. So really, really good to see, really good to see this. That, that was fun. Uh, um, okay. Did you have some inspiration from the world tour or from uh, the other competition happening uh, is, around is, there? Totally, totally. I mean, I I take what I experienced in Taiwan as my reference. You know, that's my yardstick where, you know, I want to do something like that. And 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 even um, the boss uh, here at at Asus India, when I, he's totally, totally, totally supportive. And his main aim is, and he was telling us this, is that in the next three, three to four years. He wants to have like a proper overclocking championship in India where we fly everybody down. That that's the ultimate goal. We yeah. this has this has to go prime time. It has to. There's there's just no other way. Because I mean, come on, a 1.2 billion people. We have to have people who are interested in this. It's just the numbers. The numbers. It's it's not. Uh, you have the numbers. Oh yeah, pretty much like gaming. <laughs> you have numbers. So that's that's all. What is important in there. Um, uh, We, we did talk about a little bit over the weekend because uh, I helped you guys with like the the uh, the LN2 uh, safety training and so on. But, uh, yep. I, I had not much information about the workshop. So how did you do the workshop? How did you do it? Um, so we basically showed them uh, the right way to prep um, systems right down. I mean, even in the pictures, you, you can see we actually showed them the right way to assemble gear and then we had them assemble their systems themselves. And we were, you know, sort of pointing out the right way and the wrong way and stuff like that. So right down from the grounds up, you want to have them go, you know, hands on. Just jump in, get your hands dirty. There's there's no other way. Out of the frying pan, into the fire. <laughs> <laughs> you had them overclock first on air cooling and then switch to uh, extreme? Um, yeah, uh, we basically showed them how to overclock the system. We had another system which was set up, which was um, a, um, a, a 6700K. Again, I mean, you've people are talking about the big mora there so that was my 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 radiator and um so we showed them how to overclock there we had that system set up so that people come and bench tighten nexus and you know get their hands dirty with 3d as well after they were done with the competition and then we then me and hazan were like yeah it's about time we get going with the extreme <laughs> because a lot of guys were you know there to see that so That, do you think that most of the people you did train during these mm -hmm. events uh, were actually going to continue that and maybe buy uh, LN2 gears? Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, a lot of them went back saying, "I want to get my hands dirty." So, again, we've <laughs> we've we've set this lab up, and I'm gonna you know mention this again. Everybody's welcome. Come get your hands dirty. We've got pots. We've got LN2. It's, it's and it's, it's fun. On the house. Yeah, and it's fun, and we're there. So. Come, have a blast. We'll have a blast with you. <laughs> awesome. We had a blast, but we were there, so <laughs> we'll <be> there next time. <laughs> yeah. uh, 
you, you did talk that you had Hassan. Um, he's from uh, Indonesia. Yeah. Uh, he was there as a guest. He was there as a as, speaker. As a guest, as a speaker, and um, he also did uh, part of the. I mean, he did quite a bit of the workshop and you know the LN2 briefing and stuff like that. So excellent, excellent to have somebody there, somebody of that 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 stature. And you know, it was it, another thing. It was really surprising for me to see that a lot of the kids here actually knew who he was and they know about the overclockers like they actually you know they've been to the bot and they've done the research so very very nice to see and yeah how did you choose the guys attending the event was that like a open or you send invitation to people um it was basically i mean i was just talking to i was just talking with azan on on, on facebook and i was like you know we're, we're planning stuff like this and he was like hmm, i wouldn't mind coming and i just i just you know, happened to mention this to the guys at Asus. So it just worked out from there. They were like, sure, okay, bring him on. Let's rock and roll. Well, the, the rock and roll, and that's how it works mostly in the in this yeah. industry anyway. Um, the, the, the official name of the event was the Asus Power User Meet User. India, right? Yeah. And that was for the first day when they were doing a lot of the products and user interaction and, you know, getting feedback from all the power users and enthusiasts. And then for the second day, it was the Asus India OC showdown. So there were two different events, but it was kind of clubbed together as one big, you know, get together. So, yeah. Well, that, that, that looks fun, but you seem to be one of the main guy beyond these events. Um, you're not working for Asus, so what is your no. collaboration with them? Um, I've, I've just been very, very close with the guys at Asus. I mean, friends of mine got jobs at Asus five, six years ago, and so it was just, it's, been a very nice relationship I've, I've kind of had with them and I'm I'm totally ready to help I mean this is just this is mind-blowing for me as well so anything that they want I'm ready to do uh, anything to help the scene grow here right now that's the most important bit we need more people to get clocking <laughs> so, so as, long as, it's, uh, as long as it's going to be promoting the overclocking community you're going to be always yeah. to do something right oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah I'll do whatever it takes I mean uh, business is business, but this is also, you know, something that it is. This, uh, this is, th this is what keeps me happy. Business is business, but this makes me really, really happy. So, yeah. So you have the business that pay for the bill, and you have <laughs> the thing that is your hobby that makes you happy, and that's pretty much what it is now. That's true. True. So money comes in from computers, and it goes back into hardware. Yeah. <laughs> Full circle. <laughs> like from computers to computers. <laughs> hey, um, what was your best moment of the weekend if you have to choose one? Oh, um, benching with Hazan, without a doubt. I I got to learn so much, and um, I'm I got to max out my I got to max out my CPU. So the tips and you know the tweaks are so invaluable for people like me who you know will we we'll try and try and try. I've said you know I've said this before, but. It's just so difficult for us with limited hardware to figure out what the right tweaks are because, you know, it's just one chip and half the time, we, you know, we don't want to degrade it or kill it or, you know, keep pushing it. So it's great to have somebody <laughs> like that here. And surprisingly, my CPU wasn't wasn't that bad. Uh, he actually got me the CPU. I bought it from him. Uh, he hadn't tested it. I was just like, you know, it looks good. Can I have it, please? And he was like, sure, I'll bring it with me. And um, yeah. Uh, chip turned out just fine. We needed it last night. I mean, I, I guess you guys saw the pictures on Facebook. Uh, late night Ben session. I Trop saw them. Yeah, I guess, yeah, actually, I wanted to ask you about that. Um, you had two days non-stop of event and the preparation before that. And yeah. Saturday night, I saw you guys posting. So I was about, like, I was like starting my evening here, and you were supposed to be like sleeping and preparing for the next day, but you were still benching, and it actually yeah. a very good XTU score for that. And even Obscure Paradox on the on the live chat mentioned that one. <laughs> oh, wow, nice. Um, I actually, I actually got a better score at at the event. I actually hit twenty thirty five, which is I'm tied right now with uh, Tabs Labs. So. I could manage to get the chip up to six gigahertz, and I could run next to you, which was fantastic. So that's that's thank you, Hazan. I mean, that's one of my biggest highlights. I could max the hell out of that CPU. So well, really that, fun. That's too bad he's still sleeping at the moment. I know he's still asleep, <laughs> but it's okay. 
Uh, well, I think that's the end of the show. It's going to be uh, one hour that we are doing this. Um, thank you guys for watching. If you have a few more questions, you can always ask them on the live chat. Um, if you're watching this on the replay on YouTube or on Twitch, just don't uh, hesitate to comment if you have any question about what we did talk uh, today with our guest. We had Jon Elmore from the uh, one of the best overclocker in my uh, in my opinion and uh, he's now working at Amazing. Asus and he told us a lot of information about the Maximus 8 Extreme if you have any question about that board you can just always ask in the comments and uh, we had two news from India talking about the Asus Power User Meetup that and the OC workshop that they did in the uh, in India this weekend and although if you have any question about that or if you like the concept just give it a thumbs up if you don't like my accent or that we crashed during the live give it a thumbs down but anyway just uh, let us know what you think about the show. Uh, thank you, Timothy, for um, crashing and going back on your feet as fast as you can. I hope nobody noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will patch it together for the for the for the export to YouTube, so the replay will be in one piece. So you guys on the replay, you can give it give it a thumbs up right now because that's going to be in one piece and not two parts. <laughs> well, uh, thank you guys for being with us uh, that early in the morning or that late in the night, depending where you are uh, watching this show. And uh, thank you guys for being here. We're going to see you, uh, Timothy. When is the next show? The next show will be recorded on Monday. So probably, um, uh, so not this Monday, right? Monday next week. So should be out probably right after that. And we're going to see if we can uh, get some cool information, more information about the HOT by then. So hopefully that's going to be some cool stuff over there. And we're also going to talk about what happened in Japan uh, this weekend because there was also some OC activities over there. So we're going to show you all that next week in the OC show. So stay tuned and always watch out for the OC show on YouTube. And until then, keep pushing it. Keep pushing it.